Greetings, friends. I present to you my list of the most hellish creatures imaginable. Most of these creatures are in fiction, like in the form of puppets for TV productions for children. Some of these things are in the realm of books only. I included one animal in the list, but other, otherwise it's, it's basically things from popular culture. Uh, don't be fooled by the initial appearance of something. If something appears to be mundane or harmless, let it sink in a little bit. Sometimes you start to notice things that it's hard to put your finger on what it is about something, but it's a combination of factors. Anyways, so when popular culture gives us like the alien from the alien movies or velociraptors or zombies as this thing to really scare you, those things are all like all up in your face and like showing all their cards and like, ah, they're there to kill you right away. It's like, no, that's not actually what makes something so perversely creepy. You get the most creepy and the darkest things in, uh, in, a, bit, in a bit different fashion. It's a much, much more subtle. But anyways, uh, number one on my list is ALF. ALF is a creation, I, I guess, from the 80s. And I have a picture here. I'll, I'll go to my slideshow. Well, let me see if I... Oh, here he is. Yeah, he's uh, got the wavy hairdo, but he's, I guess, an alien, something, some furry creature. Uh, but you can tell right away that this is a disgusting, smelly uh, creature that is in, in no way human, and you should not be around this creature and... Uh, it might have it might have to be taken out, you know. I mean, like with the. I mean, uh, I don't mean that in a violent way. But this is not something you can you can have around, and uh, so Alf, extremely extremely dark, creepy. Those black eyes, those coals. Wouldn't trust that at all. And then. Uh, Big Bird and Snuffleupagus. I mean, they both occupy the number three position because I guess, I don't know, they, they appear together sometimes, not all the time. But Big Bird and Snuffleupagus are actually guys in a suit or, or two guys in whatever. I don't know, maybe Snuffleupagus has more than one guy. I don't know. But um, <laughs> uh, Big Bird is maybe not quite as disturbing as Snuffleupagus because Snuffleupagus is not only creepy it's also like something right out of a nightmare. I may have had some sort of nightmare about some similar creature. Something between an elephant, a dog, and Jabba the Hutt. I would classify Big Bird and Snuffleupagus as extremely dangerous creatures. They should not exist they should not be allowed to uh, have any flourishing on this green earth. Then there's Bert and Ernie. And admittedly, Bert and Ernie, the puppets themselves don't look that creepy. They just look fairly standard. But uh, someone made like a human rendition, so-called so human rendition of what Bert and Ernie would look like. And I, I'd say that these renditions of Bert and Ernie as humans are some of the most disturbing things I've ever seen. Especially this, the Bert creature here from different angles. Um, and then this one of, I don't know if this is actually like wax or maybe, I think actually these guys like put on prosthetics or something and were posing. But that's just very, very disturbing to me. <laughs> I like that, like, oh my goodness. Wow. And uh, if you don't know 
Uh, Bert and Ernie sleep in the same bed. That's that's one of the, the things they do. I, I, I'm not making that up. Uh, and then there's E.T. the extraterrestrial. Completely demonic creature. Straight up demonic. I, and, and, and as a kid, because I was a kid, you know, around the, you know, uh, a few, some years after this came out, I think, but, but still it was in, it was a popular movie when I was a kid still, but I always thought that this was a disgusting, scary creature. I wouldn't want to be, I wouldn't want to touch it. I wouldn't want to be anywhere near it. I feel like I get sick from being around it and, um. Uh, and you see, they're trying to introduce all these things to kids, too. And like, oh, you know, make it, you know, he's, an, oh, he's adorable. No, no, he's not. He's not. He's not okay. Of course, this list would not be complete without mentioning McDonald's and the mascots of McDonald's. I mean, they're Ronald McDonald. I mean, like any clown, clowns are, are obviously... Creepy by nature, a clown is creepy and, and dark. But he's not actually the most creepy here. Really, it's these other mascots they had in the 80s, the 90s, and they still do today. They have here, standing in the background, that large purple thing that's uh, they called Grimace. And I thought Grimace is the sort of thing that would eat the other ones if you left the room and you left him in the room unsupervised. He would eat the other creatures of the McDonald's Playland. Because these are Playland creatures you would see when you go, you know, to have down in the basement of McDonald's. Yeah, these other creatures, like, are pretty disturbing. I don't know, like, especially those small things standing in the foreground those pom-pom like fluff balls with the eyes and two legs but no no arms or vis visible bodies i think they make like squeaking sounds or something and but like that is something out of another nightmare for a kid or an or an adult it's it doesn't matter and i think as a kid Kids can pick up on this stuff too. It's not like kids can't see when something's creepy, but it's just like the dumber adults who never clued into that, they go along with this and they help perpetuate it. The dumb kids don't see it, but thing I mean, you can kids can pick up on this too. It's not like they're they're they, you know, they can't tune into that. And then in the right, we have the hamburger who's actually kind of a basically a, a humanoid, but he's not actually a human person because they have a weird old man on the left the only one who's just a, a human without you know wearing a suit but Hamburglar is particularly uh, creepy because he's kind of like he's a he's a like a boy kind of a boyish face but he's a burglar and he steals hamburgers which he can't stop doing but so that's a weird backstory but but just as the way he looks, it's, yeah, it's extremely like, uh, like he's some kind of rapist or, or just a ghoul. These are ghouls. These are, but the Grim, Grim is especially is the most creepy. Like, ooh, he's going to, he probably has very sharp teeth. And this creature with the, the hamburger for a head. Again, like, it's, it's just something out of a very disturbing world. But also, this list would not be complete without mentioning the, the Oompa Loompas from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And I mean the 1971 movie with Gene, what's his name? The guy who passed away a few years back. And I think his version would be far better than any version made by Johnny Depp or with Johnny Depp. But having said that, it's, th that movie was dark, but, but then so was Roald Dahl's books. They were weird and kind of dark. Roald Dahl is kind of a, a 
a weird a weird writer like he he had some weird stories like have you ever seen the min pins that illustrated book or uh, charlie and the great glass elevator and all that stuff some pretty weird stuff going on james and the giant peach I never thought about that, where, like, insects are becoming characters. Like, some weird, weird stuff. Specifically, I thought from the movie, The Oompa Loompas, seeing that as a kid, there was definitely something not right. And they're singing their songs, and they're in the, this candy land. And it wasn't just the Oompa Loompas, it was some of this scenery in, in candy land where everything is made of sugar and chocolate. It's like the garden of earthly delights and then but you know the the movie led on to this when they uh was self-aware that it was dark because the scene where the, the the boat goes into the tunnel and things get kind of messed up and at one point you even see a chicken's head getting cut off in this psychedelic experience in the tunnel they were a little self-aware that yeah there's some darkness to this so you can give them that but um, so wrapping this up we have um Dr. Seuss, of course, Dr. Seuss. This list wouldn't be complete without mentioning Dr. Seuss. And I would specifically mention his creation, the Lorax. Just this small little thing. You couldn't really call it humanoid, but it had this weird wavy mustache. Like if a walrus was crossbred with a groundhog or something. And of course, it speaks on behalf of the trees and the, the, the land, and you're not allowed to damage the environment. And it's like... So basically, the Lorax... Um, what I would say is, like, kill it. This thing is not human. Uh, kill it right away. Shoot on sight. Don't ask questions, because this thing is perverted, it's evil, it's a threat to your physical life. Okay, aside from all the uh, environmentalism narrative of all, all well, you know, what he was, what Dr. Seuss was trying to communicate with that story, just his, cre his, cre his creations in general were all demonic and perverted, and maybe I'm being a little harsh in calling them all demonic. Maybe that's not necessarily true, but certainly a lot of it is. It's very disturbing. <laughs> and any kid should be able to see that too. And I think a lot of kids did see that and have seen that and will always see that because some kids can see these things. The Wizard of Oz, I'm not going to spend too much time. I'm just going to mention it because it does get a mention. I guess the... Uh... The Scarecrow, maybe the Tin Man, I don't know, maybe they're not that creepy, but some of the other things in that movie, I do think get on the creepiest list. And then the one animal in this list is the Chinchilla. It's like a giant mouse, basically, with these extremely messed up dark eyes. And I just thought the chinchilla, like people get it as a pet, but it lives in the wild, some places in South America. And it's just an, it's just really, really disgusting creature from hell. A hellish pet. I'm not ending this with a whimper, because when you look for Tom Bombadil, now you would only know this if you had read Lord of the Rings trilogy or or The Hobbit, I don't remember, but you know, which one it is, but Tom Bombadil is a character who didn't make it his way into the movies, at least not the, the first ones they made. He's portrayed in different images if you look online, so that, that's what I was looking on, online. I don't, I'm not going from how he, how he came across in the book. I'm, but, but these images are shared by fans of Lord of the Rings who create this stuff. So it's shared by the, it's created by the fan culture and it's on videos of people who talk about this stuff. They use these images. So I think that these are somewhat accepted images of Tom Bombadil.
very gleeful and happy and he's out in the woods and but there's something not human about him i can't quite put my finger on it the way he's painted here is just more or less like a human so i don't know but there's just something not human about this guy he cannot be trusted this is an evil thing it's an evil spirit in this one, he's strolling down a path through the woods, and yeah, this is even more messed up. His grin there, like, almost looks like he has sharp teeth. The hat is not something I like to see. I don't, like, something about wearing that kind of hat. It's the kind of hat that a gnome has, and a gnome is a is a bad, a bad spirit. So we're, we're we're dealing with some kind of like earth demon spirit here, but that's what they like. They like that stuff. I know there's actually a lot of Christian uh, meanings in Lord of the Rings. I'm not saying that's not the case, but uh, you know, people uh, use it in different ways. Oh, here we, here's Tom Bombadil in some sort of... Oh, he had the ring, right? But the ring could not cor corrupt him. So I don't know, maybe he w was Tolkien even trying to say that Tom Bombadil was like a Christ-like figure, maybe? But you can also look at it like, well, they're celebrating this character. He was one of the most pure characters if he can't be corrupted by the ring and yet he's this earth demon wood creature no but this picture is weird he's like staring right into the the viewer it's uh it's weird and that that tree in the background that's pretty dark and ominous and it's like that's an inversion of who knows what hasta luego amigos